Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. Hope you guys enjoyed the last one. It was a, again, it was a doozy, but we got a lot of good uh, information coming out of that show. Not a lot of news this week. Um, little f- few things here and there. More ru- or some some rumors, some pictures of Chris Hemsworth looking diesel. Um, I'm interested in, in 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 seeing where this is gonna go. Um, joining me again, as always, Mr. Brian Schultz. What's going on, Brian? How much, Pablo? Thanksgiving week. Hope everyone's set to have as nice a holiday as possible under the circumstances. But uh, in some ways, I'm kind of glad the industry gave us a a little bit of a more relaxing holiday week after last week was just. Yeah. Non-stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It gives it gives us uh, some time to just uh, immerse ourselves into the family environment, right? And and being thankful for what we got and uh, continuing to move forward. We got some industry news. I like starting off with the industry news because we can get that out of the way and then get into the MCU and DC. But I like dis- discussing industry news. Uh, we got some leaked footage of a possible trailer or what they claim to be is a trailer for the investors on Disney on, on December 10th. The investors... Uh, um, 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 What's it called? What do they call it? Investor Day. Virtual Investor Day is what they're doing. Virtual Investor Day. So supposedly this got leaked. Um, If you if you go over to the Cosmic Wonder, uh, he shared the 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 footage, and it shows a couple of things. It shows some release dates. It shows possibly. And it's something that we've alluded to in the past saying, you know, how Black Widow may not make it onto the theater and will be streamed on their platform. We've also spoken about if you if you've listened to our show, we've also spoken about as as Brian um, described what we are supposedly going to be getting from Disney Plus, and that's that premiere access. So we saw some of that. Brian, you know, let's not discuss whether this is real or not, because this could be real and this and this couldn't, but it's certainly not far-fetched that Disney has a plan, and based on what's recently happened with Disney, they're focused on streaming. They're focused on getting content onto their platform. They're focused on getting subscribers. They're focused on getting back to business. What do you think? So I think the timing of this video ahead of December 10th is an instance where the world of movie rumors intersects with Wall Street because whether or not they put Black Widow on Disney Plus as a premier access title will affect the stock because this is something that the the market wants to know. Are you willing to do this? Are you willing to take the big, you know, the ace of the ace of spades, the ace of hearts, you're going to really take that out of the deck and put that out for the service. So what's going to happen, I think is either if this video is legitimate, it will run in theory on December 10th. So you'll get the confirmation if it does not run. Like, so for some reason, this video was, created i suspect someone will ask them the question based on this video and say hey there's something out there floating saying that black widow may go to disney plus in april 2021 and you'll get a chance to see the executives at disney react to that question and so even if they don't give you a direct answer you may be able to read some tea leaves so i think it's one of those rare instances where this coming out now is actually going to have an impact on some of the Q&A we might see on December 10th if Disney doesn't proactively kind of just put it out there 
as mm -hmm. part of their presentation. So we also got some possible release dates for Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming out supposedly based on this leak July of 2021. Now this is something that was supposed to be released in August of this year, but obviously because of what's going on, there's been delays after delays. Um, if this turns out to be true, does it, I mean, obviously for me and for, I think for mostly everyone, it doesn't really put a damper on my uh, um, expectations of the, of the show and the excitement of the show. Because if this turns out to be true, you have to remember the release dates for these other films, like Black Widow. Mm. Then after that, Shang-Chi. And based on what people have been talking about, this is this is being shot on a grand scale, right? They they they, they glow trotting, I think. So what if this turns out to be that we get it in July 2021? What, what is it going to change anything for you, or do you see a strategy that they're doing? Or are they stepping back and looking at the story? What do you think is happening? I think so. As a little bit of background as to why the order changed, at least the way I understand it, is Falcon and Winter Soldier. One of the comments that the reason why Anthony Mackie made that comment in part is because this was shot in multiple countries, multiple locations, much more consistent with a feature film. So one of the reasons this got delayed the way it did is because they had to shut down production because there were certain locations in Europe they could no longer get to. And so that's proved problematic. You know, the production is now back up and running, but it took them a while to get there. Whereas I think WandaVision was shot in one spot. I think it's one studio, one location, and then all the post is done kind of in, in California and, and away we go. So I think that's what allowed WandaVision to actually come to the service first. In terms of timing, I guess the only thing I ever read from these is when they change, when the order moves around, it gives you a little clue as to does this property matter for the other properties? And so if, if there's some flexibility with Falcon Winter Soldier moving around, it kind of would lead you to believe that it's not as directly tied into the 2021 calendar of Black Widow, Shang-Chi, and Eternals that you can kind of put it wherever you want. Yeah. I'll throw it back to you, which is, do you worry about having a new large scale series coming out at the same time as there is a new, in theory, a large, large scale feature film. So if Shang-Chi is coming out and Falcon and Winter Soldier is in episode two, does that in any way affect your sort of enjoyment or your focus on those two things? No, because I think with Shang-Chi, I think it's just the beginning, it's certainly expanding into this world and is the beginning of what whatever comes out of Shang-Chi. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we already, or, or we already know that we're going to get Easter eggs for Thunderbolts and there's going to stuff that's going to build from there as well. Will they intertwine? I think mutants will probably be that bridge in between these two um, properties. Who knows? I, I, I'm pretty sure X-Men is going to be bridging everything together. They're going to be all over the place. Right. So nah. I, I mean, if I, once, once I see Shang-Chi, I mean, we can watch uh, episode one of Falcon and the Winter Soldier over and over and over again, right? And Shang-Chi is just going to be such a different film um, for me and a, just a different experience. So I'm, I'm equally excited for both of them. I think you hit on it, which is the contrast for me is Falcon. And I was thinking about this the other day. Civil War came out in 2016. So we'll basically be five years removed from the last time we were in the Captain America centric world which i think you and i agree is the best yeah. of the individual franchises they've built so this will kind of feel almost like linus's blanket it's like oh i'm back in a back in a place i know and love with characters that i, I remember that's kind of what i expect 
Yeah. Whereas I think with WandaVision, Shang-Chi, I think you're right. I think it's, we're, we're looking for something new and different that we haven't felt before. So I think that's actually a good contrast in some ways yeah. to have that. Yeah. Have that out there. So who knows? Let's see what we get on December 10th when they lay it all out there for everyone to see and to know and to ask the questions and to find out, to solidify and confirm what everyone has been speculating on. Let, tell us in the comments what you expect. Is this, uh, if you go over to the Cosmic Wonder, you'll see the video um, and you tell us what you think. Hemsworth. I'm going to say it right now. This is an Oscar bid. He's going for the Oscar, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to get, he's going for that trophy. He is uh, posted a picture a few days ago or a week ago of him throwing over a tire. And as you can tell, he's ripped and he's said in some interviews that this is as big as he's ever gotten. And I don't know if he's finished. Because Hulk Hogan was a huge dude. He wasn't as ripped, though. So let's see where this goes. But um, I think this is... And, and, and you know, certain hu his humor, I guess, is going to play out here as well. I'm, sure, I'm certainly certain that they're going to use that because how good... Oh, because, because how good he is with his comedic timing. Um... And this could be, this could be the one for him. This could be the one for him. Hulkamania, like that was for everyone growing up during that time. If you were a kid, you will never forget Hulkamania. And you will never forget the day he did the let drop on Macho Man Randy Savage and turn NWO. You'll never forget those moments. Picked up Andre the Giant. Didn't yeah, Sam, Andre the Giant. That, that was a spectacle. That was a spectacle. WrestleMania. This is this is it for him. What do you think? What? Because I he signed up for this like a year and a half or two years ago. Yeah, so it it dovetails nicely because obviously he he has to shoot Thor in January, so he's very much in Thor shape and then some. And let's not forget. I was thinking about this the other day. For Fat Thor, he wore a fat suit. And he's now sharing the screen in Love and Thunder with the ultimate actor of transformation in Christian Bale, who's probably like, man, why'd you wear a fat suit? I would have just gained 150 pounds. Then I would have lost 200 pounds. Like, come on, like, you know, be a man. Like, do this the real way. But, but the point is, I think also, it just, you know, I think it confirms that from a Marvel perspective, we are going to get some resolution to the Fat Thor yeah. storyline. There'll probably be something in there because he's wear, able to wear this prosthetic, and then underneath, we know he looks he looks great. And that old that physique, he can kind of keep working on and carry through to, as you said, Hulkamania. I, you know, I made this comment to you off the air, but I think that I think that the test for me is Hulk Hogan. If we're talking about that character as it ties as it compares to Thor. Hulk Hogan on the mic was just as important as Hulk Hogan in the ring. Sure, he looked the part. He's a big guy. But yes. if Hulk wasn't as dynamic and charismatic, and he was he was the rock before the rock. I mean, he, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. that guy yeah. who could sell you on anything. And that era, too, like I said, where we had Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you had Savage. Like, these guys, in some ways, you know, the modern generation of wrestlers are always trying to aspire to that level of reaction dialogue. Yeah. And so my challenge for, for Hemsworth has been he can't play it with an Aussie accent. So And Certainly Hulk not. has a very distinctive voice. What you going to do, brother? Like, can, can he turn the, the vocal cords into that? I mean, the few times we've seen him go American, I think a black hat is probably a notable example. It was, it was tough. Like, that was not a great look for him. So... I'm sure he's studying it. I'm sure he's he's got something up his sleeve. But to your point, for him to make the leap to this is an award-winning role or a role that puts him into awards contention, he's going to have to nail yeah. 
the monologues. Yeah. Because he'll be able to do the wrestling. He's a good enough athlete and he's a big enough guy. He's got to be able to nail the personality for this. I story. believe in Hemsworth. I think he can do it. I think he can do it. If he can pull that off and be like, yes, that's that's if he can do that, get him that Oscar. Or at least put him on that list. Because you you Hulk Hogan is the only time I remember somebody else doing Hulk Hogan on screen that sounded good was Kristen Bell when he put that guy up on the string. Where were the other drugs going? <laughs> <laughs> Swear to me, you know, he sounded straight up like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but yeah, I think Hemsworth can do it, man. I think he has the chops. I think he understands, hopefully, he understands what he needs to do to pull this off. Because if it doesn't work, it can be bad. It can go bad. And he's been trying to break away from Thor. And it's been tough. Yeah. Like we talked about, Extraction probably has been his most successful film. But it's not yeah. really about his acting chops. It's his yeah, physicality. His that, yeah. and, the, and it's the way the movie is shot that yeah. really makes that work. It's, it's, yeah. So this is a whole different, hey, you're, you know, you're, you're in the spotlight. You yeah. have to drive this movie for it to work. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below. What do you guys think about Hemsworth um, trying to get an Oscar? Possibly. I think he's trying to get an Oscar with this. Because I'm also curious to see. I am curious to see what Thor we get in between in, in Love and Thunder. I think there oh, yeah. is. A, you know, we've seen the comic side. We've seen the down on his luck side now in the fat Thor. We've seen the. Shakespearean side and the Ken Branagh thing. I, you know, I am curious to what note they're going to try to hit with this one. Yeah. Like he, he, as to you pointed this out, he lost everything. Like this is the character who lost the most and is trying to find his way back. So in some ways we talk about the Hulk role as the award-winning role. I realize he's not going to get it for Thor, but he has an opportunity to do something different. I think yeah. with his character in Thor yeah. 4. Yeah. Yeah. He has to do something different. Um, yeah, he lost, yo, he lost a lot. If you sit down and really think about it, I'm not going to go through it again, but when you're done with this show, sit down and think about what Thor lost. And if you're into the, if you're into these movies, like we are, you're going to be like, wow, he lost a lot. How does he come back from that? This is that movie that can possibly bring him back. MBJ, Michael B. Jordan has been tapped to direct Creed 3. And this news came out some time ago, but and nobody was really talking about it. I want to talk about it because growing up watching Rocky was an event for me. And Michael B. Jordan is taking it over with Creed. I don't know what we're going to get with Creed 3, I have a suggestion. You <laughs> gotta bring back. Why is Clubber Lang not? Why is Mr. T not eating right now? Carl Weathers is back. Sylvester Stallone is always, he's never left the building. You know? Dolph Lundgren is back. Come on, you gotta bring Mr. T back. You gotta. And he has to have a son. Come on, man. He has to have a son. And there's an actor, if you saw Power, there was an actor, his character name was Tubit. I'll put it up on the screen. You can't tell me that this guy can't be Club of Lang's son. Creed, uh, Michael B. Jordan has to go back and bring that newness or that sort of nostalgic, that 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 adversary that you want to beat, right? I think he has to do it. He has to try to get Mr. T back on screen. He should be eating right now because everybody else from that era is eating right now. What you think, Brian? Well, I think it's funny how this series is increasingly imitating the original incarnation of Rocky. I mean, I think you know Stallone. That original movie, which he he helped write or he wrote, mm -hmm. came out of nowhere, wins the Oscar in '76. But then Stallone ultimately took over as a director. He became the writer and director for the subsequent films. And so Michael B. Jordan is effectively doing the same thing. He's effectively the same progression 
if he's now going to be the director. And I think, you know, for his career, and it ties back to, you know, superhero and comic genre, so many interesting things on his plate, so in demand, right? We saw him play Killmonger, but the rumors, you know, is it is it Jon Stewart? Is it even Superman? You know, yeah. we're actually going to see him, not a superhero role, but a role to keep an eye on. He's doing Without Remorse, which is a Tom Clancy uh, novel adaptation where he's playing John Clark, who in the, in the books is Caucasian, but it, 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 he looks, you know, he looks quite the part in, in the pictures they've shown, but mm-hmm. sort of like a, not quite a super soldier, but that kind of badass personality type. And so you'll get to see him in an, what could be an action franchise as well. So when is that supposed to come out? Oh, it's been shot or has been shoot. I think it's been shot. So probably next year is what in theory it should come out. But, um, you know, so you're going to get a chance to see Michael B. Jordan in a lot of roles and, um, and the choices he makes will be interesting, but this is a, this will be a challenge because uh, the Creed franchise, like I said, having Ryan Coogler do the first one, you have an, an Academy Award winning level director in the first one. You have to come up with some special material. And I, I would caution against mirroring too much off of Rocky Three. If you go back and that movie does not age well. So I love Apollo in that movie, and I love the relationship in that yeah. movie. And Mr. T is great. You can no no complaints there. But the content, Pauly, some of the the r- racial stuff that yeah yeah that would yeah. never get out of the room. Oh, yeah. So they gotta be they gotta be a little careful with how much I don't like these people. <laughs> <laughs> I got a reputation. Come on, you can't say anything yeah, like that. Yeah, now. Yeah, no, yeah. that's not happening. So so I, I I'll be curious to see. But I think. Yeah, well, you hit on it. I mean, clearly the consensus ask of fans for the Creed, for Creed Three is going to be something related to Clever Lang. I mean, it has to be, right? And yeah. Drago, after they went to Drago already. Back. Yeah. So. Yeah, they, they got to do it. They got to do it. But I'm I'm certainly interested in seeing that if that occurs again. Two bit. From power, watch him, and you'll see like this guy can play his son, and because. In Rocky Three, Mr. T was very disrespectful, <laughs> you know, and uh, I think we need to see something like that for Rocky Three. And who knows? Lang the series on HBO Max. Follow that road. Who knows? This is a brand new actor, and I think he did a tremendous job in Power. If you ever saw it, uh, so there's a lot of possibilities there. Let's get into the MCU news. So supposedly. There is rumor out there that Doc Ock, Mr. Alfred Molina in Spider-Man 2, who died in that movie. So it's this is interesting. He's rumored to be back for what we are calling a multiverse, Spider-Man multiverse that's happening. We know what's happening. We know what's happening. So the rumor that he, so the rumor is that he's coming back. Brian, my reaction to this was I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Hey, whatever you want to do, I, explain let's see explain this to me though. How is this going to work? Cuz he died in Spider-Man 2, so how do they make this work and are you surprised at this uh, possible rumor, but yet is not out of the question. As always, we don't know exactly what the capacity is. I mean, there's a part of me that says a, a multiverse means they can drop a bag for pretty much anyone. <laughs> and given how successful these movies have been, most actors and actors are going to say, why the heck not? I'll shoot yeah. for a day. Give me some cash. Yeah. That being said, Alfred Molina's Doc Ock, one of the best, still one of the best villains in a comic book adaptation. Yes, still, yes. even with all the movies we've had in the last 10 years, that performance holds up. It is at once a frightening oh, yeah. character and a sympathetic character because of kind of like what happened with I look, If they can get him to do it, I'm all for as big of a role as they want to give him as long as the story makes sense because I think he's he That's was perfect in the role and like you know the, they made the tech look good 20 years ago I can only yeah. imagine what they'd be able to do with it yeah. now so 
hey, this this to me is one of those. I I was surprised. I would not have seen Alfred Molina as the guy to say, hey, 15, 20 years removed from this role, I'm I'm ready to go back to it. But it makes me intrigued because it was a great performance, and I think we part of the reason we hold up Spider Man Two the way we do is because because of, of, of his role in it. Of course, Alfred Molina did a heck of a job as Doc Ogg, and that's the key right there. How does this? How does this make sense? I think I wonder. They don't want to reestablish a new Doc Ock and fail. I don't know. Because after that, does Doc Ock exist exist in this uh, in the regular Marvel universe? Right. Well, he has to at some point. One would assume, right? I mean, if they're heading down Sinister Six path and they're creating what, it'd be hard to kind of have a Spider Verse a central Spider-Verse that doesn't have a Doc Ock somewhere. And I realize in Into the Spider-Verse, they changed the uh, the gender, right, of the, of the character in that. Um, yeah. At least the main villain in that. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe there's a way to do a handoff here. I mean, I, I have lots of possibilities. But I, yeah, I think Spider-Man without without Doctor, Doctor Octopus on some level doesn't totally make sense over the long run. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, because he is, uh, you know... Um big villain growing up as a kid in every iteration iteration of spider-man doc ock was uh, 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 uh you know his enemy yeah so, so just like green goblin hobgoblin and all these other characters right his shocker but um i'm curious to know will the multiverse and Sinister Six be happening at the same time? That's a good question. You know? Because if you do the multiverse, multiverse is a big, you know, it, we said in, in our sh- previous shows, multiverse is a big concept. How do you explain all this? You can't just give it to us right away and then be done with it, right? Because it just doesn't work, right? Um, and then you got Sinister Six. How are we building up to that? Obviously, we've seen in after Far From Home, we saw possibilities and, and we see the connections of that happening. We just haven't seen it, seen it in full fledged. This is or we know the story of how this happens. We just don't know. We know we're going to get it, but we just don't know how this is going to work out. So you got two different concepts. I think it's going to probably be something happening at the same time. You also have different voices in the room, right? Because you have Kevin Feige, who's probably going to be in the category of slow playing it the way they did with the event. You, you know, play out stingers, teasers, cameos, yeah. hints, right? Like they, they dropped the cap shield in the Iron Man movies long before we saw he's probably going to stay in the camp of that sony obviously doesn't have the full library so they're probably going to be pushing the other way a little bit saying we want to get these characters on screen faster because we want to make more bank yeah with the, with the universe that we have i mean clearly i think you and i as fans would say the slow pl- the slow burn is better the slow oh, burn yeah. is how you build anticipation of course you create well-crafted individual scenes and then you choose who are the characters here from the other universes who we really want to feed. That's why Alfred Molina is exciting because it's a great actor who did the yeah. part really well. So, yeah. like, if you're gonna go back to the past and say, "Who am I gonna? Who am I gonna pull forward and say I want to get another great performance out of?" That's actually somebody that would be at the top of my list. Yeah, yeah. So let us know in the comment section below. What do you guys think of Doc Ock coming back and Alfred Molina reprising the role? I'm not mad at the idea, but I just want to make sure that they make sense of all of it. It can't be just something thrown together, you know. It, it got to make sense. Keep me, keep me in that story. Um, She-Hulk. There was an article written that they've made some casting calls for certain types of individuals. Um, for she, um, for some of these characters that are going to be in She-Hulk, I still don't know what this show is going to be about. Obviously, we know some of the things that will occur, but how again, how this is going to look? If you, if you watched our previous shows or heard it, 
you know, I've said it over and over again. I don't know what this is going to look like. Um, did you really, Brian? I like this was like number eight on my on my <laughs> on my yes. least exciting, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like I'm reporting on it because it's giving us some information on the show and the type of characters um, and 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 future characters that are going to be introduced. Um, what were your um, uh, what was your reaction to 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 that article? I mean, these are always tough because they, they're they're on the one hand they're giving you general role like general types of people to expect, but then you always know at least one of these is a code name probably for somebody in the universe in the canon who's really relevant. We don't know okay. who that is yet. Um, so I know there was a mention of like a, a Kardashian esque influencer yes. was one of the characters. Like I, you know, I mean, they're trying to modernize some of this, I, but it's hard for me to connect that back to okay, what's your central story when we don't yeah. know? I mean, we technically haven't even gotten the official confirmation of the star, right? You keep, yeah, you keep, you there keep was there was confirmation, that. and then so, there was denial. Yeah, well, like Mark Ruffalo seemed to confirm it, and then like she denied it. So I, you know, this one. I'm I'm in the camp as you. You had it eight. I had it seven. I just until we see, you know, footage, showrunner. You know, here's the storyline we're adapting or you know, using as our basis. I think it's hard to get too too fired up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and then I think until like I said, the the trailer will be key because that'll show us okay, what visual, what look are you going for? Because as we said, you've already done Professor Hulk. So how is this coexistence of the Hulk persona and the Jennifer Walters persona going to look and feel like a new character to us? Yeah, this this is this is She-Hulk is always going to be a question mark for me uh, until I see where this is heading. What this is going to actually again? What is this going to look like? What this what is this story going to be? I, I'm 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 not I'm curious, but I'm curious to see what 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 this is going to be because. We, you know, I, this is this is a tough one. She Hulk is a tough one. I hope it does well, but I, I don't know if it'll it'll get the fanfare that they're looking for for it. Charlie Cox, Daredevil, John Bernthal, Punisher. These characters, Punisher and Daredevil, I'm speaking of, have returned. On, on, have, have they returned back to Marvel? The so there was fire. a, uh, yeah, I mean, there there was a, I don't know what to call it. There was sort of a restricted period between mm -hmm. when the Netflix shows ended and when Marvel would be eligible, now that they own all the characters, would be eligible to use them again. So we're starting to come up on those deadlines. And therefore, I think you're seeing some speculation of some of those characters maybe being revisited. And I think, I mean, I would say, listen, I mean, one of the things Netflix had a really high hit rate on was casting in yeah. its shows. I think uh, Iron Fist is probably the only oh, miss yeah. that oh, they yeah. had. Yeah. But I think, you know, Charlie Cox, John Bernthal, uh, Mike Coulter, and uh, Kristen Ritter all, I mean, excellent, excellent lead yeah. characters for their shows. Vincent D'Onofrio, obviously, epic as the kingpin oh. supporting characters. So, like, Netflix have did a pretty good job there. I, I wouldn't be shocked. And the fan base is there. I mean, Marvel's aware of the following. Yeah. I mean, so I, I wouldn't be shocked if a few of these make their way into the MCU. I don't know if they're going to do it like right after the deadline. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, much yeah, yeah. on their plate, but, you know. Charlie Cox was fantastic as Daredevil. And he is not far removed from the character in terms of age, he can still do it. It'll still look like the daredevil that we saw on Netflix and possibly even better if they decide to go along with it. P prior to this, you know, it was too early for Charlie Cox because people were asking him about him, you know, portraying daredevil in the MCU. And he was like, you know, they haven't asked me probably didn't or probably like they were waiting for this moment who knows they're not gonna charlie cox and john Burton are not gonna say that they are 
in the MCU, knowing the the barriers that have to be crossed, right? So I'm certain if Kevin Feige is a fa- is a fan of Marvel and, and and the characters, not if you know he saw Daredevil, he saw the Punisher. He's he he knows what is great and what isn't, sort of, right? Captain Marvel is still one, not one of my favorites. Iron Man three is not one of my favorites. Thor: The Dark World is not a, is not a, one one of my favorites as well. Um, Thor: Ragnarok even, that's, which is I'll, I'll get a lot of uh, hate for that, but he's gonna he's gonna he's heard people. Talk about Charlie Cox as Daredevil, John Bernthal as Punisher. Those were, and John Bernthal recently said, whenever they want me back, I'm ready. You know? So it wouldn't be a stretch. It would be very tricky for them to to want to recast these characters. I, I'd say that. I, I it, It'll be hard. It'll be hard. I don't know how. How would you feel if they recast it? Oh, I think at least one of them is getting recast. I, so I think it's, I think one of the assumptions that's dangerous to make is that just because these were TV, these were streaming series before, that that's what the characters are going to be going forward. We don't know that. Yeah. I mean, they, they may envision a feature film around one or more of these they may see it as streaming maybe they see it as part of a team up um as sort of a you know like kind of like they were using hulk as well that's the only way they legally could use hulk but using hulk as a supporting character i think that's all to be written so i think assuming hey we're going to take the character it's going to we're going to build a new streaming show around that character I, i would be hesitant to say that so as a result i think odds are pretty high at least one of them at least one, probably more than one, stays in the role. But I think the odds are also just as high that at least one of them gets replaced because they might have a different vision and or they bring on a, they entrust a different, they're going to trust a director or a showrunner mm-hmm. to say, okay, Daredevil's your baby or Punisher's going to be your world. And that person might say, okay, I have my go to choice for that role and if that's the way it is like i don't necessarily think they're going to bring them all over i would be surprised if every one of them is still in the role to me it's difficult to replace charlie cox to me it's even difficult to replace john bernthal it's very difficult for you to replace vincent and that's the hardest one i actually think of the ones you said i have a toughest time seeing a new kingpin which one is most likely? You're saying Charlie Cox. Well, we're we're excluding Iron Fist, right? Because I think. I'm oh gonna, no, no, he's gonna. That's <laughs> <laughs> We're excluding that, right? Make the call. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's a tough one. I would probably guess. I'm actually gonna guess Burnthal is the most likely. Why, why, why? So I loved his intensity. I love the dark side of the way he played the role, but I don't think it's the only way that role can be played. And I wouldn't shock me if in different hands you saw someone say, maybe I want somebody more imposing um, physically imposing, maybe a different kind of look to the character, maybe a different kind of intensity versus kind of that almost PTSD intensity that that Bernthal had. So that's a character I think you could interpret in a couple different ways. And I also have in the back of my mind, Peacemaker is going to be on screen before in this go around. So they're going to kind of I plant see. the flag on a, on what you could say is a version of this character that they're then going to want to go in a different direction from. So what we get there may have some influence on what we get in Punisher ultimately. You see, if he hadn't said that, all I was thinking is, Brian, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. John Bernthal was perfect. But 
because you said Peacemaker. I'm like, they have similar stories. And if he plays it a way that's fantastic, John Cena, then who knows? Maybe they may not go the route of John Bernthal. But he was amazing as punishing, man. How do you... It's not a knock on his performance. No, no, no. Of course not. I understand that. I understand that. I mean... The thing about the thing I, about it for me is I go back to all the different portrayals of the Punisher, and although I like the Punisher, I like his character. You know, I enjoyed watching all of them, but I know they weren't great films, right? Um, that was just the fan in me. If I had to like, if as a critic, I'm like, nah, this doesn't work. Next, hated. But as a fan of the 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 character. I enjoyed watching them. Um, that, yeah, that's going to be a tough one. That's going to be a tough one. I, and I also think Mike Coulter might get replaced. I think he might get replaced. Um, yeah, tell us what you think about Charlie Cox, John Bernthal coming back into the MCU world. Um, is it possible that it may they may get replaced? And if so, who? Let us know in the comment section below. DC News. We got some release dates for Wonder Woman. The rumor is, not the rumor is confirmed, correct? Yeah, no, the global schedule is out. Okay, all right. Wow. So, yeah. so the news is December 16th is when some countries will be able to see it first. And then global release December 25th, correct? Yeah. And a lot of the countries, I think, where they're rolling it out in theaters, not only are cinemas open, but HBO Max probably not available. So, Got it. Yeah. Got it. So if, for those living in those countries, hooray for you. Please don't spoil it for no one. And if you're living on the internet, watch out. Because people will write about it. People will spoil it. So do your best to stay away. Also Patty means, Jenkins, huh? Also me, I was, I was gonna say also means the I haven't seen what the review embargo is gonna be on that film, but it guarantees that we will see reviews in uh, kind of the yes, week before yes. December 16th, which means you're gonna get if it's good, well or bad, but if it's good, you're gonna get a couple of weeks build up into yeah, December twenty fifth. And that's that's also important, I think. Yeah, yeah. Finally, we're gonna get to see, read some reviews on something, right? <laughs> exactly. I, I miss going to Rotten Tomatoes and seeing what these crazy people are talking about when they say this movie's whack when it's actually fantastic. Um, yeah, that's a good point, man. Finally, seeing reviews and seeing, you know, if this, I'm, I'm looking forward to to to, to reading what other people have to say about something that has been expected for quite some time and is a big this is like the first big major release on a streaming platform right well i mean do you i yeah i think it's another scale i mean it's mulan was the a remake but it yeah. was all this is a sequel to a yeah. proven money maker that's true the, that's the difference right this is a 820 million dollar film Original, you're getting number two, supposed to be bigger. That is another scale. Like Milan should have been big, but we'll never, you know, that was the first um, in, in that, in the, first and only in that, in that yeah. one, so a little different. What sort of key metrics are you looking for after Wonder Woman? Well, I'm curious to see, look, we have the tenant path for global box. So you know kind of the, how that played out and it played out at a time where COVID numbers were generally lower than they are now. So from an international perspective, I think that that's the number one thing to watch is like, is this tracking? In theory, this should track better because mm -hmm. it is a sequel and this mm -hmm. character was popular overseas. So we'll watch that. That's kind of what I would say internationally. Mm -hmm. I mean, with HBO you're not really HBO max. You're not really going to know unless one, like if it's let's put it this way, if it's gigantic, like if there's a lot of subscribers, 
wouldn't be surprised if Warner Brothers drops some kind of press release or tweets something about the audience. Uh, we've seen that with Netflix a couple of times. Like you saw it the other day with like Queen's Gambit, you know, most watched miniseries, 62 million views. If it's a huge success, wouldn't be surprised if you saw some numbers. If you don't see anything, I might be a little suspicious that this didn't yeah. hit maybe the way that they thought. But In terms of subscribers. Yeah, but I tend to think like relative to their subscriber base, I don't know how this fails. I mean, they're, they're starting yeah. from a much lower place than like than a Netflix or a Disney. So. Yeah. Would it have been a mistake if they... Because obviously they're releasing this for free for everybody to watch for to get subscribers so I, obviously the, the the main driving force for this is to get hbo max subscribers would it have been a mistake if they had charged uh, 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 uh you know uh 30 dollars to see it not necessarily i just think they're not in like i said they're not in the same place that so the other issue with hbo max is it's they've been the service has not been available on every device. So they only recently got, was it Amazon? They sort of, Amazon Fire? They yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. that out a couple of weeks ago. They're not on Roku yet. So the other assumption I'm making is that by Christmas, HBO Max is going to be available on Roku. Otherwise, I feel yes, like yes, you're kind of yeah. leaving, you're leaving some money on the table just by doing that. Yeah. Um, but like I said, Disney Plus, you know, 73 million subscribers today you just have a stronger base yeah, to yeah. try a premier access. Yeah. You know, Warner needs to build audience first. Yeah, so yeah. it makes sense what they're doing, I think, in, in yeah. terms of just making it part of the part of the system. Yeah. Tell us what you guys think about uh, the, re the release dates. Are you guys going to avoid spoilers? Are you guys going to get curious? You guys don't care? Let us know in the comment section below. Pedro and the Pascal, last bit, of, by the way, streaming huh? king. Pedro Pascal, by the way, streaming king for this holiday season because he's a star of the Mandalorian and he's the villain in Wonder Woman 1984. So, <laughs> yeah, that he he's get he's getting a lot of work, man. <laughs> he is to me, to me, he is the modern day Burt Reynolds. <laughs> yes, he is the the second coming of Burt Reynolds. That guy right there, Pedro Pascal. He he gives off that vibe. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Smoking and Abandoned <laughs> remake <laughs> with him. I'd avoid it, Pedro. I'd avoid it. But if it's for Netflix or and the money is right, you can make it happen. Uh, Patty Jenkins has uh, stated that they're working on, and she's worked on this, uh, this story with uh, Jeff Johns, called the Amazonians. Okay. Um, this is, she's very excited for this. Um, is it, th is this going to be a movie or a series? Series. And it's supposedly, she said, was intended to fall. I don't, this is the part I don't quite get. So she said it was supposed to, it needed to fall between Wonder Woman 2 and Wonder Woman 3. But then she said Wonder Woman 3 was always meant to be a contemporary movie, right? So first one was World War yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 1, and then the second one was 1984, and the third mm -hmm. one's supposed to be modern day. So I don't know, I have, I don't know why she said it has to be between two and three, but that's been her message, and that's kind of what she, I think, renewed in the recent interviews yeah. that's still still in the works yeah. i don't know what what do you think is this is this is this is this a story you needed to see explored or, or were interested to see explored i would only this is the thing on the assumption i'm also assuming that wonder woman is not really in this show i mean who knows? Because she's cool with, 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 with Gal. If Patty asked her to do something on it and come back or whatever, she, you know, she, I think she'd show up. Um, but this is all to me. It only makes sense or 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 or, or feels um, 
I'll put it this way. Will Gagadol continue to be Wonder Woman? I think it's three movies and done. And then maybe Snyder Cut stuff. So if 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 this is supposed to be a one off or I don't know how long I I think it's it's made possible for you to do limited series. So I don't know if they'll go that direction. Um it all depends on how that what they, where they're going with this, what story they're gonna tell. If it's supposed to build off of something or off or, or off a new Wonder Woman that's possibly not going to be there and gal I don't know where it goes I want I, I want to see where this is going to go what is this connecting to what is you know is is going to be is is a risk because no one's really asking for this just like nobody's asking for the trench so these are just things that people want to do because they can do it. Obviously, yes, but like I'll watch it. If, and if people tell me, yo, it's dope, I'll watch it. But I'm not like wait, circling it on my calendar to, 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 to wait for it. So I agree with you on that last point, which is it's always riskier to spin something off because you're interested in it versus we are going to adapt something else right so if we compare this to peacemaker for example that is a canon character a a character we're not creating something out of thin air that's an actual character with his own story so we're effectively spinning him out of suicide squad but it's not something we're making up as we go yeah, yeah exactly this is something that's it's similar to the trench. You're taking it from the film and you're spinning it out, but it's an original creation. Yeah. My, I'm a little sucker for mythological stuff, so I, I'm probably a little more interested than you. My main question, and the reason I said about timing is, I like the scenes with the Amazons in in the first Wonder Woman film, but one of the things I liked most about it was Robin Wright, who of course dies in the original film. So. Part of me feels like if you want to do this, I want to go back to when Robin Wright's still alive. Because <laughs> yeah. I want Connie Nielsen and Robin Wright to both be in this series if you want to if you want to make this work. Yeah. And I don't know if they can I don't know if they can do that. So or if they will do that. Um, which then means if you're gonna go back to that time period, you're now predating yeah. Diana, you're predating Wonder Woman. Yeah. So mm, not sure where they can go with that. I I think the con- you know, the content, like I said, it could be interesting. It, the, the risky run is if it's too campy, you're headed toward, you know, like Xena Warrior Princess, which I know ran for a long time, was very popular, but I think stylistically, yeah. that's not what they're going for here. So, a yeah. little nervous. And like I said, very curious as to why Patty Jenkins is really saying this has to be between two and three. That's the part that sort of is stuck in my head. It's like, why? Why does a series yeah. like this need to be at a certain point in time? So. Yeah, I mean... Listen, if she can do it she, and she wants to do it and she thinks it's dope and the studios trust her to do something um, fantastic and new and you're always looking for that 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 risk and, you know, and, and putting something out that no one has ever seen before. I mean, we see it all the time and some of them miss and some of them hit. So I think this is one of those that you're not sure if this is going to be a winner this is a passion project for her and um, we'll have to wait and see. Um, And again, if she does three Wonder Woman films for them and let's say she delivers the studio $3 billion and then she says, I want to do this. Oh yeah. yeah, You're probably going to say yes. Of course. (laughs) Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Patty Jenkins is certainly in that uh, uh, group of, uh, of, of elite directors, I guess, with like James Gunn. Um, that was a miss by the MCU. She was the original director for Thor 2. And uh, I certainly would rather have seen her version of it than Dark World. Yeah, yeah. So 
let's see, man. Hopefully it does well. But, you know, certainly this is early, early, early stages of this. So we don't know when we'll get this. Certainly not next year, possibly in 2022. Maybe. Who knows? Let's see how Wonder Woman does. <laughs> um, that's our show for today. Um, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, these these times are, are, are rough, um, but we'll get through it. Um, keep uh, commenting in the comment section below. Keep liking that 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 button. Hitting that like button doesn't cost you a thing. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's get that algorithm going because that's what we need. Um, hopefully, you guys um, continue to watch our shows. Spotlight shows are coming. Spotlight shows are coming. Um, we had fun doing uh, uh, Shang-Chi. Um, the next one we're going to do is uh, uh, Zack Snyder. It's Justice League. We're going to do a spotlight show on that with uh, Mr. Alex Bernstein. Um, Brian. Last words. Uh, like I said, I hope everyone has as good a holiday as possible. You have a new Mandalorian episode to keep you company on Friday. We're really rolling now. I feel like in the season, last two last two shows, really getting some forward momentum in the main story. So really exciting stuff. And uh, as I know we were talking about a little bit, but Grief Karga back on screen. That can't be bad. So <laughs> something, hey. something for the holiday to watch. Yeah. I gotta and Gina gotta, and Gina Carano, by the way, in, in our genre, Gina Carano. Like, I feel like we need more of her somewhere in the MCU or the DC universe. Her supporting role in uh, in Deadpool, not enough for me. Yeah, we need more of her. Yeah, she. she listen, I want to give a. Show. We were supposed to talk to this. I didn't put it in the show notes, but we're gonna talk about it now because you mentioned it. Carl Weathers. <laughs> Supposedly, there was a little bit of a mishap, um, and one of the crew members showed up in one of the shots. Look that up. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's oh, a he directed the episode. Okay. Yes, yes, there's a screenshot where there's a, there's a crew guy chilling in jeans and stuff. It was crazy. But Carl Weathers' directorial debut. Am I correct? Uh, it's certainly the first episode he's directed in The Mandalorian. Yeah. I'm not aware that he was a prolific director. Besides yeah. This, yeah. He did a fantastic job. This was a very, very entertaining episode. And I like Carl Weathers, man. He, he, he's, he's been great in a lot of things. And I'm glad that he's doing stuff like this. Um, hopefully we get to see him more in other things because I think he's a great actor and Sylvester Stallone, you missed out on the opportunity to give that man an Oscar for for doing uh, Rocky. You killed him off too early, too early. Um, I don't think he liked that either. That, that I mean, he went out off? strong. He went out strong. Rocky four, actually his, he, he is awesome in the, yeah. in the beginning of that movie. Oh yeah. But yeah, I have a, I have a feeling he, he was not thrilled when he got the script for that. So I'm sure it's like, damn, are you killing me off, man? Damn. <laughs> but that char but that character from Rocky one all the way through Rocky four. Plus, you know, I think for our generation, his turn in predator. Oh yeah. Which I still think is the greatest team of guys put together in any sort of military movie top to bottom. Yeah. Uh, shouts to Shane Black, obviously, who did Iron Man 3. Uh, yeah. He was in that movie. But, you know, I, there's a part of me when I watch Carl Weathers and Mandalorian now, and it's so fun because you can tell he's having fun. Like, he's like, oh, I yeah. get it. This is a little bit silly. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to go yeah, rock yeah, this yeah, part yeah, every yeah, time yeah, I get yeah, to talk. Yeah. But part of me looks at that on a more serious note and says, you know, again, is there something else for him to do? MCU, DC Universe, he still got it. Oh, so yeah. some kind of mentor role, some kind of agent role, some kind of... New support. Marvel? I was going to say, there's something here like that I feel like people should not sleep on Carl Weathers Ooh. as some sort of supporting elder statesman yeah, character man. in one of these shows. I, yeah, I would, man. He can carry it, yeah. Yeah, man. Blue Marvel? You can't... You can't... Listen... That's a hell of a role if he were to get that. That's a hell of a role. 
Um, yeah, man, Gina Carano, man, I was impressed. I was impressed with that episode. I was impressed with her. I was impressed with how they further along the the story and the the the, the history. Like, mm-hmm. if you are a fan of Star Wars and the things that they mention in that, you're like, wow, they brought it back, right? Um, yeah, man, this is a fan. Mandalorian is a fantastic show, man. It's a fantastic show. Uh, I, I, and I and and I, I just enjoy the feel of going back week to week to watch a show that I'm looking forward to see every week. You know, um, have you ever seen Haywire? I heard of it, but I haven't seen it. No, go. It's worth it's worth a watch, and I say with the people at home, it's worth a watch. If you you know that was Gina Carano's debut. Uh, ah, Steven, yes, Steven, I heard of Steven it. Even Soderbergh directed it. Michael yes, Fassbender's yes, yes. in it as one of yes. the villains. It's it's a it's a tight watch it's like 90 minutes okay super fast but if you want to see her as what she could be maybe as sort of a comic book character or you know something in 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 the in the universe that we follow watch yeah. that film because she has both charisma and we know obviously from her ultimate from her sort yeah. of mar- mixed martial arts day she has the athleticism and the physicality to yeah yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm a fan i'm a fan yeah, she she was that she was fantastic, and 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 uh, she she could be a dope She Hulk. I watch that. I'd watch that. <laughs> I'd watch that. Um, yeah, there was something else that I have forgot to mention. But if that is all, thanks for joining us once again on the Nerd Gen Report. Um, again, hit that like button, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share it with your friends and comment in the comment section below. Send us an email if you want about some show suggestions or some topics that you would like us to discuss. Uh, it's crazy, but I'm going to get towards that, that format where I get questions from people and we talk about it on the show. Oh, um, yeah, man. Uh, So thank you once again for joining us. Be safe, and we'll see you next time.